Hello everyone. In this video, I wanted to discuss this idea I had a while back where we basically solve quadratics, kind of uh, using the quadratic formula, but also factoring. So we're going to essentially use the quadratic formula as a hint to solve by factoring. So I have this example here where, I mean, if, if you look at it, the steps are already made for us. So when we solve by factoring, we of course we can distribute this and essentially we simplify both sides of the equation. Then we move everything to one side so the zeros on the other. I call this isolating zero. So here we've isolated the zero. Then the big step we factor. And then we set each of the factors equal to zero in something known as the zero product property, or as I like to use it for short, uh, ZPP. Now that, that factoring step is kind of interesting. So we're looking for two numbers that simultaneously multiply to the last number, which is negative four and add to the middle one, neg uh, negative 3. So what two numbers multiply to negative 4 and also add to negative 3? 4 and 1 multiply to 4, but to, mul to add to negative 3, they have to have different signs, of course, and even to multiply to negative 4, they have to multiply, they have to have different signs as well. So notice if the signs are negative 4 or positive 1, this works out perfect. They multiply to negative 4 and simultaneously uh, will combine by adding to negative 3. So this actually checks out. Now this x diagram is actually pretty popular, and I like showing this to my students when uh, we go over factoring. I think it's great. Now, as far as how we go from here to here, uh, how the zero product property works, we basically just change the signs of the numbers next to x. So notice if that was zero, x would be four, and if this was zero, x would be negative one. Now, if you had a number in front of x, like let's say there was a three in front of this or something like that, then just imagine what happens when you have three x minus four equals zero. You would add four to the opposite side, then you would divide by 3. So not only here do we change the sign, but we also divide by any number in front of x. So that's important to bring up as well. Okay, now with that out of the way, I want to talk a little bit about the quadratic formula, which I'm sure a lot of you have seen before. And this basically says that if you have a quadratic equation where 0 is already isolated, ax, plus, AX squared plus bx plus c equals 0, then uh, x is equal to negative b plus or minus this square root um, all over 2a. Now, it's a lot to remember, and people kind of have trouble remembering it, and, but usually it's given in, in like, uh, tests and so on. But what I want to do is I actually want to kind of separate things. Notice you can separate this as negative b over 2a, plus or minus the radical over 2a. But I actually want to simplify it even more than that. I'm just going to isolate um, this as a number and write this as a single radical. So let's call this r and the square root of s. Now, I know what you're probably thinking is that, well, wasn't it over 2a? Well, you can think of 2a as being the square root of 4 squared, 4a squared. So, in fact, any number is the square root of something. So, in fact, you can just throw it all under a radical. So, this is an oversimplification. And what this allows us to do, basically, is to just remember the fact, not the quadratic formula necessarily, but this kind of, um, essentially, what the quadratic formula is kind of saying is that any quadratic equation has solutions that are of the form some number plus or minus a radical. That's essentially what the quadratic formula says without all of the details. And what's really nice about this is that you can actually solve by factoring still, even if it didn't actually factor in the usual way. Let me show you what I mean. So let's say we wanted to solve this by factoring. We would move everything to one side so the zeros on the other. And we would get stuck because notice here, there are no two numbers that multiply to negative 5 and that simultaneously add to 2. So we'd have to use a quadratic formula, right? Well, kind of. Actually, it does factor, but not with integers, with weird radical numbers. In fact, just think of it like this. If one of the numbers was r plus radical s and the other one was r minus radical s, well, how would it look like to see if um, these two things multiply to negative 5? Well, you'd actually end up getting this. Let me show this in green. You have r minus radical s, r plus radical s equals negative 5, what we're multiplying to. Now, notice we have a difference in squares. So you have r squared minus radical s squared. Radical s squared is just s, though, and you get this. That's great. Now what's even better is that when you add them together, I'll write that on, this, on the other side here, when you add them together, what happens? Adding r minus radical s to r plus the square root of s 
being equal to 2, notice the radicals cancel. So we just get 2r is equal to 2, divided by 2r is 1. So in fact, plugging that back in over here, if r is equal to 1, that means uh, 1 minus s is equal to negative 5. Sorry if my r's and s's look similar, or my 5's and s's look similar. But anyways, uh, subtracting 1, negative s is negative 6, so s is 6. Perfect. So what that means, actually, is that this thing does factor. So this equation, by this factorization, becomes the following. It becomes x plus r, um, which is 1, minus radical 6 times x plus 1 plus radical 6. Now you can actually check that this factorization works. r, oh, again, r is 1. So 1 plus radical 6 and 1 minus radical 6, those multiply together to give you negative 5. And when you add them together, you get um, you get two. So these are the two numbers that will multiply to negative five and simultaneously add to two. Now they are numbers, right? But they're just not integers. They're not like what we're used to. We're used to getting integers. Like in the above, we had a negative four and positive one. But here we have one a minus radical six and one plus radical six. Pretty interesting. And now, of course, um, using the zero product property, we can see that, well, x is equal to negative 1 plus radical 6 and negative 1 minus radical 6. So I'll just put a minus here and box this. This is the answer. In fact, this is actually what you would get if you were to use quadratic formula, but this is in a more kind of factor-friendly way. So I think this would be a nice transition to quadratic formula if you didn't like using it as much, or maybe an alternate approach, but um, just from an instructor standpoint, if you were to use this on the exam, and obviously this is something that isn't usually taught, this is just an idea I'm throwing out there. You know, it looks a little sketchy from an instructor's standpoint. So just kind of keep that in mind if you're a student learning these things and trying to, attempting to use this in the class. Okay, but it definitely works. Now, uh, let's take a look at this next example. This next example is a little more crazy. So <clears throat> let's follow this. You'll end up getting x squared, uh, negative 3x, positive 2x, those combined to negative x, then minus 6. We'll distribute the 3. And then uh, this distributes 5x times 2, 5x times negative x. So that becomes, um, let's see, 10x minus 5x squared plus 2. Okay, I'll distribute the 3 then. And I'll actually uh, simultaneously subtract those terms on the right to the left side. Things combine in kind of a nice way. And we get 8x squared. The x is combined to uh, negative 13, looks like. And then the constants combined to negative 20. So if you know the AC method, then you can actually try to multiply the outer two and t see what numbers multiply to that product and simultaneously add to the middle one, uh, negative 13, and go from there. But no such numbers actually exist. You can try it on your own, but it doesn't really work out. So instead, what you can do is you can try to use the result above, or the way of factoring above. But um, it's a little harder when there's a number in front of x squared. So what we can do instead is just divide by that. The issue here is that we're now introducing fractions, which is actually not that big of a deal. Zero is even divided by eight, actually, in this case. Notice. It's not that big of a deal because, again, the R and S thing is kind of so general that when you solve, you, you know, fractions aren't that big of a deal, as it turns out. But let's, um, let's just take it one bit at a time, we'll be able to see. So we have negative 13 over 8x. 20 over 8 reduces by dividing by 4 to 5 over 2, and then 0. So we want to find two numbers that when multiplied give you negative 5 halves, and when added give you negative 13 over 8. Sounds kind of crazy, but remember from the quadratic formula, we know these numbers will be of the form r plus the square root of something, or minus the square root of something. Okay. So now notice, for the product, you just get a difference of squares, and you get r squared minus uh, minus s. Radical s squared is just s. So again, in green, let me just show that. Multiplying, let me write it up here, gives me r squared minus s equals negative 5 over 2. And then adding them, the radical s is canceled, and you get 2s 
is equal to the middle one, negative 13 over 8. So then notice dividing by 2 gives you r is equal to negative 13 over 16. And then scoring that and plugging that back into this gives us, uh, let's see. Well, 13 squared is 169. 16 squared is 256. Minus s equals negative 5 over 2. Okay. <laughs> uh, so the numbers are a little crazy, but that's fine. So uh, what is s then? So there's a few ways of doing this. I'm going to add s to the right and uh, add 5 over 2 to the left. So we get s is equal to 5 over 2 added to uh, 169 over that. So let me just uh, figure that out real quick. I mean, you can use uh, common denominators and it won't be too bad, actually. But... Um, it ends up being, and it's because 5 times 256 is a kind of a large number. It's uh, 1, 2, 8, 0. Um, uh, right, I'm sorry. We're multiplying by 128, not by 256. But anyways, um, calculations aside, you end up getting 809 over 256. Now again, all that all I'm doing there is just adding this to that side and simultaneously adding the s to the right, but then I'm switching the order of the quality. So it looks kind of strange, but that's what we end up getting. Okay. So we're good. We have uh, we have our factorization. We know this factors as x minus. Um, well, really, it's x plus negative thirteen over sixteen. So that's why I'm writing minus plus the square root of this. And by the way, what's great about this is the square root of 256 is 16. So really, this is 809 over 256 like this. Radical 256, which is 16. And the other factor is the same thing, but with a minus. And by zero product property, well, you would, of course, change the sign of these things. And you would get x is equal to positive 13 over 16 um, plus or minus radical uh, 8 or 9 over 16. But of course, since we have the same common denominator, we can just combine them to be positive 13 plus or minus radical 8 or 9 over 16. Now, yes, you have to change the sign to both of those numbers. So the positive becomes negative and negative becomes positive. But regardless, you still have a plus or minus. So that's great. And again, this is the same result you would get if you were to use quadratic formula. And yeah, maybe quadratic formula is faster, but again, this ties it together well with factoring, which is great. And this is a pretty extreme case because the, uh, the numbers weren't really in our favor, and it kind of still works out, I think. So you can try comparing contrast with the usual way of using quadratic formula and seeing that this will indeed work. And I want to do one last example, and uh, in this one, something funny will happen. Let's take a look. So let's distribute, 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 then combine. Um, so I get, let's see, 12x to the second, minus 8x, that's going to be, I'm going to simultaneously move everything over, so it's going to be 6x, but subtract it, and then uh, 15, subtract it, and then add the 3x to that side. Now combining things, we get 12x squared, the x is combined to negative 14 plus 3 is negative 11, and then minus 15 equals 0. So here, what are the two numbers that multiply to, okay, again, so we can't just jump into that because remember here, we have a, a number in front of x squared, so we have to divide everything by 12, actually. So I jumped the gun there, sorry about that. Divide everything by 12, even 0, but that doesn't really affect it. Uh, there's some reduction in the last term. You can divide by 3, so you get 5 over 4 equals 0. Perfect. Great, so now, what two numbers multiply to the last one, negative 5 over 4, and simultaneously add to the middle one, which is negative 11 over 12. Believe it or not, there's actually a way of doing this with fractions. It's kind of nice. Um, you'd have to have the same denominator, so you'd multiply this top and bottom by something to get that product of those denominators. It ends up kind of working out pretty cool, but uh, we're not doing that here. We're doing this uh, r plus radical s, r minus radical s uh, method. Now, uh, here I'm going to actually add first, which probably is arguably what we should have been doing. So when you add them, 
the radical s's cancel out, so you just get 2s. Oh, sorry, 2r. Let me write that in green over here. So combining those, you get 2r is equal to negative 11 over 12, and then dividing by, uh, by 2 gives you negative 11 over 24. Perfect. So that's r. What about s? Well, when you multiply them, again, you get a difference of squares, which is r squared minus s squared, a radical s squared, which is just s, equals negative 5 over 4. Okay, perfect. Great. Now remember, r is negative 11 over 24, so you have to square that to find uh, s, in finding s. Uh, that's a little much, but we can do it. 11 squared is 121. Notice negative doesn't matter because only squared is positive anyways. 24 squared ends up being 576, I think. Minus s equals negative 5 over 4. So here I'll actually show some of the work instead of uh, cheating earlier with a calculator like I did in the background. But I'll subtract that uh, fraction to this side. And then, again, how we got uh, 576 was by uh, scoring 24. So it's 24 times 24. And if you think about it, 24 is 6 times 4. So 24 times 24 is 4 times 6 times 24. So really all you have to do is multiply 6 to 24 to that 4. So multiplying this top and bottom by 6 times 24. So 6 times 24 is 124. And uh, if you multiply by 144 here, then you end up getting the following. All over 576, you get negative. 5 times 1 is 44 is 720. And minus 121. So I'm getting negative 841 over 576. And also notice this is negative s, by the way. So if negative s is that, that means s is positive that, so that's good. Now notice, if that's the case, then radical s is the square root of the top over the square root of the bottom. This is actually 29 over 24. And that's great, it's surprising, but great. Why it's so great is because now we know that this thing factors as what? As x plus r minus radical s, which again, r was what? Negative 11. Over 24 minus 29 over 24 times r plus radical s which is negative 11 over 24 plus 29 over 24 and yes they're both over 24 so what does that mean that means we can actually combine them of course so the first one's combined to that's 40 over 24 that actually reduces and this one combines to positive 29 minus 11 is uh, 17, 18 over 24. And that reduces as well. So let's see what these things reduce to. So if you divide top and bottom by 8 for the first one, you get 5 over 3. And if you uh, divide top and bottom of this one by, let's say, 6, you get 3 over 4. So by the zero product property, x is equal to 5 over 3 or negative 3 over 4. And that's it. That's our answer. Pretty crazy, kind of intense. Uh, the numbers got a little large there. And that's actually what happens when you use quadratic formula. The numbers get kind of large. But I think what's really interesting about this is there's kind of a nice consequence is that you can actually multiply both sides by 12 to cancel all of the denominators. And of course, 12 is 3 times 4, so when you distribute 3 into the first one, and distribute 4 into the second one, these denominators cancel out in a nice way, and you get 3x minus 5 for one of them, and 4x plus 3 for the other one. So in fact, this is a true factorization of the original thing. Uh, which was before dividing by 12, 12x squared minus 11x minus 15. Crazy. So we've kind of found a way to use quadratic formula to factor. Of course, you can always do that. You can just change the signs and clear denominators. 
but it's a nice connection, nice tie-in. I, I think it really helps. So the video may have been a little long because of all the calculations and a little bit of the tedious checking because the numbers get kind of large. But still, nonetheless, a really interesting method I wanted to show off. And I uh, hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please uh, comment, like, subscribe. I'd really like to know everybody's uh, thoughts on this idea. And if you want to see more videos like this, please let me know in the comments and I'll, I'll do my best to create them. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.